What's up, people? In this video, Prison the Yard told me to do this. Prashant H, yo, you should make a reaction video to this, might be fun. Okay, Prashant H, no problemo. Uh, hmm. When you catch your first unlock to a pr California prison yard, you better think twice about every single move you make. Yikes. Alright. God, I'm so glad I'm not in prison. Anyway. The prison yard. So many fucking movies about it. So few have been on it and came out to tell you what it's about. It's about banging. Everyone's banging on each other. You're segregated by race. The blacks and the Asians are over here. They got their own bars. The whites and the Southsiders are over here. They got their own bars. Bars are where we work out. I'm talking about the old weight pile, but there is no motherfucking weights because some punk ass motherfucker had to hit someone with the weights. So they got taken away. Like most of the shit we love in there gets taken away because a bitch ass motherfucker ain't smart enough to think about that shit. But anyways, we're segregated by race. The blacks, others, and fucking everybody over here. The whites, the homies over here, and we never intermingle. Maybe in passing we'll say what's up, but we ain't working out together. We ain't playing basketball together. We ain't fucking playing handball together. If one of their fucking balls, basketballs, or something rolls in our area, they wait at the corner of our weight pile and wait for us to hand it to them. Yo, they'll never touch our area. If they do, it's a territorial threat that can kick off a riot in one fucking second. Just matters how people are feeling that day if they want to deal with someone's inability to adhere to the motherfucking rules. In prison, it's rules, and you'll fucking listen to them, or you'll get your shit fucking handed to you. That's it. You ain't tough. You ain't gonna fucking be able to take what motherfuckers are gonna give you in there because motherfuckers don't care. So the fact is, is when you come to where the whites are at, motherfuckers, the homies and the whites are gonna ask you, hey, what they call you, where you from? What do they call you, where you from out there, homeboy? That's what they're gonna ask you. That's why I just made it really fucking simple. I got the WW and the Dago. My name's Wes Watson from Dago. I don't like handles. I like to tell you my whole name. I like you to know who the fuck I am. That's just... So, I, I repeat, so glad I'm not in prison. I don't have to deal with this shit. Uh... Oh my god, can you imagine? Is this guy in prison? Is this a prison? I don't think so. I think he's out now, right? Although, like... My overlay is kind of in the way, but you guys can kind of see like the fence here and these lights, right? Is he, is this a park? And this is, there's like a baseball diamond behind him. I, I, I don't, I think this is like, well, there's a barbecue. Oh, you guys can't see this. Anyway, behind my overlay, there's a barbecue pit. Highly doubt there's a fucking barbecue pit in prison. Uh, homie's looking pretty jacked for sure. Definitely looking pretty yoked. Um, for sure on the sauce. Other than that, um, Okay, uh, yeah, prison, huh? I don't know, uh, prison sucks, glad I'm not there. I never really, like, understood this whole, like, segregation thing. I guess, I guess that's just, like, that's just how they have to do it there for some reason. Like, they can't be like, hey, everyone, let's all just be friends and, like, you know, blah, blah, blah. Like, I guess you have to kind of, because I, I guess the idea is that, like, you have some actually like insane people in prison and you need to kind of join one of the clubs or gangs or whatever to be safe it's for like safety purposes um otherwise you'll get killed or beat up or something i i don't really, i don't know i don't understand it i fortunately have never been to prison hopefully we'll never be to pri go to prison i don't think i'll ever go i don't know maybe in some other country if i do something stupid but I'm, I'm generally like pretty pretty safe life uh okay tell me more uh mr watson that's how i am i don't need a name called snake or nothing like that whatever if that's your choice that's your choice this was mine so i made it real fucking clear that i'm west watson from dago so when my homeboys roll in they know where the dago car is dago stands for san diego so we're gonna put d-a-g-o because we're not putting i-e on us that's not where we're from we're from san diego this is how white boys bang on each other we're not supporting some other car a car is your county that's where you're from your county as in mine being san diego is the dago car so when a motherfucker rolls in and then he's from dago he's looking he sees west watson from dago and he says there's my homeboy he comes over i got him we get straight into those burpees we get straight into that heart check we want to see where he's at there ain't no excuses we're getting straight on them bars straight into them dips straight into them burpees the fucking yard is the worst place where it always kicks off. Don't make the mistake of laying down on some fucking dirt or some grass when it kicks off. At, when people are doing work, they're cleaning up the yard. It's going to happen at the last 10 minutes of yard. So that last 10 minutes is when something bad's going to happen. One race is going to clean up their own people. Usually the homies have cleaned up every fucking day. They're stabbing someone or they're whooping on someone. They're DPing someone every fucking day. If it ain't them, it's us. So during that time, you lay on the fucking concrete. Don't get yourself a space in the dirt. Someone could bury a piece right there. You could lay on it. You could catch five for that. If you're fucking lucky, this shit happens all the motherfucking time. So what we're always doing is we're fucking making sure that our people are in line, our people are working out, the shit's mandatory, we're fucking militant, everything is mandatory, everybody works out, there is no motherfucking exceptions. Some yards got a mini canteen where you can hit the canteen during yard and you can grab yourself a fucking ice cream or a fucking, an ice fucking tickle, those long fucking ice pops or whatever, and you know that shit's nice on a 120 degree day in the middle of the fucking desert. Motherfuckers always ask how red I am. I was on the prison yard for 10 years. I didn't buy SPF 50 with the fucking copper tone baby on the front, motherfucker. <laughs> oh my god, this guy is so intense I, and I know I'm watching it at like two times speed but like uh, it's crazy you know honestly to like to, to get known in the world you, you have to basically like let go you just have to be different you, you just have to like be prepared to just 
be a complete weirdo and not give a fuck. Like honestly, what this reminds me of w when I was uh, when I was in the army, right? And when I was in basic, we had a sergeant who had a lot of combat experience, and he was like the most badass dude. He was like w he was like 21 or something, or like super young, but he, he felt like he was like much older than us just because he was so mature. I, I don't know if it was like just how he was brought up or if like combat experience will do that for you. But the dude was like mentally like super soldier, even though he was in really what was just basically like an infantry unit. Actually, now that I think about it, he came from a family like the way it kind of works in Israel. It's sort of like it's almost like royalty, right? Like if you're in a super elite unit, there's a much better chance that like your kids will also get into that super elite unit because you have connections and you can like you can like pull strings it's all about kombinot as they say in israel it's like connections basically anyway this guy had a lot of connections but he chose to be in a basically like regular infantry unit because he said that that's where he thought he could do the most good he didn't tell us that directly i heard this like through the grapevine anyway he told us one day like when we were in basic maybe like the first like two weeks or something he's like he's talking about combat being in combat and he's like listen when you're in combat you don't have time to think and if you think you're fucked you know and it's when you don't think when you like release any sort of like conscious thought and you just react like an animal would react which is where you actually do the best in combat he's like you have to uh, he didn't say you have to take risks but you have to kind of just like let yourself go and you have to like run from cover to cover and you have to do fucking somersaults and you have to dive behind fucking rocks and like all this shit that like if you were if you would think about it consciously you'd be scared you know what i mean you'd be scared to do those things but he's like when you completely let go and you do that that's when you have the greatest chance for survival or winning the battle or whatever it was so I know that doesn't really have anything to do with like getting famous on fucking Instagram, but like it's kind of the same thing. Like when you completely let go and you just like, you're like, fuck it. You just throw everything to the wind and you're like, I'm going to go, I'm going to do this. I feel like that's when you make the most, the biggest improvements. Because like, look at this guy. He's not a normal person at all. Let's look at his Instagram. Look at these veins in his arm. Holy shit, dude. Oh my goodness. What's up with these veins? These veins are putting in work, huh? Holy shit. Damn, homie is fucking jacked, huh? Wow. Is this the penitentiary? They have a stability ball in the penitentiary? No, this is like a... This is a park, right? He's out now, I'm assuming. Right? Is he out? He must be out. He can't have, like... right he, he doesn't have like yeah there's no hot tub in prison is there <laughs> that'd be kind of a cool prison uh all right cool jesus what a monster frightening frightening all right cool let's watch more That's why I'm red, okay? I sat there for 10 years when you were sitting inside your motherfucking house. That's why I'm fucking red. But anyways, are you gonna, when you're starving, are you gonna spend your money on a fucking case of Top Ramen? Or are you gonna spend your fucking money on some fucking sunscreen, you princess motherfuckers who are worried about my goddamn skin complexion? I'm burnt. Get over it. I hope I make it 10 more years. I'm gonna try my best. I hope you do too. But anyways, the fucking prison yard is where it kicks. A white boy will not fight another white boy on the yard. If he does, he's getting disciplined. We bring that shit in the house. We don't fight next to other races. That's why I got DP from doing a building with other races present. We don't do it next to the homies out of respect. We don't do it next to the blacks out of respect. You don't lose your temper. If you really wanna fight, we'll schedule it. If this is a four yard, you're using a piece. You ain't gonna be able to just go fight that man. That's how it is. It's a no hands policy. You don't wanna live that life. I try to tell the tough guys out here that really wanna be MMA. They wanna fight each other and they wanna fucking bring their fighting to the street. MMA is cool if you keep it disciplined and that's what you like and you're really about the discipline and the skill. But the second you're trying to go fuck people up, just realize you're gonna land yourself in a pen and motherfuckers ain't fighting. They're stabbing each other. That's it. You might be lucky enough to land on level two where you get in some fights. But what the fuck's that gonna do? You split the dude's lip, give him one stitch, you're getting the SBI. That's a new charge. I just told you in the last video how my boy Pirate got a life sentence for knocking a drunk dude out. Who hasn't knocked out a drunk dude? Which one of you guys hasn't had a drunk dude come up to you and knock him out? Have any of you got license for it? That shit's a setup. Prison's a fucking setup. It's bullshit. You get fucking busted on one case, and since you've been in prison before, they can double up the next time. The fuck type of shit is that? You can double me up. Meaning, if I get in a fight. And I get five-year sentence right now, and they give me five years in the court right now because I get a fight. They'll give me ten just because I've been in prison before. Didn't I serve my time? Fucks up with that law. But anyways, we have our own laws. Interesting. So that I think he's talking about probation. Uh, I heard probation explained to me one time as like probation is you know how like in the cartoons there will be like they'll try to catch a mouse or something right, and they'll put the piece of cheese with like a, a cage on top of the cheese not not like on top of it but like about to fall on it and there will be like a stick propping it up attached to a string 
probation is like the cage and if you take the cheese commit a crime whatever they pull that string cage comes down on you and you go to jail for a long time also i think it's very important to to note the distinction here between county jail and state prison i'm assuming this is state prison and not federal prison um so in county right you generally correct me if i'm wrong but in county you don't stay in county for more than like a few months right county is basically like like timeout kind of it's like timeout either while you wait to get released or you you wait to go to trial right prison is like okay you did something bad you were convicted of a crime now you're going to go to prison for several years so we can remove you from society like where this guy was this is this is prison all right they don't you don't have like an exercise yard in county jail um, and what they say is that, that county is generally much more dangerous than prison, even though he's talking about people getting stabbed and killed and all that stuff. But, but you can also hear in his explanations that there's lots of discipline, right? They have lots of rules, right? It's like, if you want to do this, we have to schedule it. You don't do this in front of the blacks. You don't do this in front of the Mexicans. Like there's, there's lots of rules. There's lots of order because if there wasn't, I mean, you put a bunch of crazy, like roided out you know violent criminals together and there's no order like crazy shit's going to go down every day it's gonna be like a melee um but in county because people know that they're only there for a short amount of time and because they're there for a short amount of time there's much less i guess uh what's it called um there's much less like reason to um to like have any rules because you know you're gonna be there for three days anyway and like you're in some gang you're gonna like want to rep your gang be like what's up motherfucker fuck you where are you from and then like you know you get into a fight with some guy and it's just it's just much crazier in county from what i understand uh also homie is red because he's he takes a lot of steroids not because like he spent a lot of time in the sun when he was in prison and now he's permanently red like when you take a lot of steroids you're i don't know if i think it like raises your blood pressure or something but it like it makes you look like red <laughs> it just like makes you look red like if you if you if you notice any of these like super roided out dudes like this guy i mean seems cool seems nice i like his style he's from california but he seems like he's on a lot of gear and also seems like is not a very chill person so i like i see a heart attack in his future I, I don't know no judgment dog like you look amazing i'm sure you're jacked i would never fuck with you in a million years but like you know and i know it's your thing to be this like intense like ex-con but for your own sake like you know go to la for a little bit dog like head to the beach chill out you know i don't know whatever fuck it i don't care whatever you want to do um but anyway that's that's why he's red it's like from the from the drugs not because he got sunburned like when he was in prison it's on the yard and the, law, the laws are fucking simple. You stay out of another racist area at all fucking costs. If I catch you even fucking tiptoeing in the blacks area, you're getting checked. I don't even care if you lost your fucking balance while you're walking by their basketball courts. The fuck did you touch their area for? Motherfuckers don't get that you don't walk against traffic on the yard. There's a flow of traffic on the yard and you never walk against the flow of traffic. Walking against the flow tells the fucking the gunner in the tower that you're about to go whack someone. You're moving in on someone. He's going to call you out right away. If the CEO's on the yard, don't come get you right a fucking way. That's a fucking aggressive movement. If you got to go to the bathrooms, they're 10 feet to the right. You don't walk across that traffic. You walk all the fucking way around the track and then you use the bathroom from the other end. Everything is about boundaries in prison. You'll always take the long way around out of respect. Everything in prison is about respect. It's one thing I haven't fucking been able to take really in here is people coming up real close behind you, invading your space like that, coming up fucking when you're putting weights away or something, and they just don't, or even at the store or something, and they come up close to you. I don't get why people do that. I don't get why they're not ingrained enough to say, I'm too close to this motherfucker. And that's the type of shit in prison you do not fucking do. Now, the white boys breaking shit up into cars is because usually when we have high numbers, we do that. Most yards, since so many white boys turned into pieces of shit and locked it up, most prison yards only got 40 white boys on the yard. 40! There's only fucking 40 of you on the fucking yard. There are probably 300 Southsiders, probably about 90 blacks. This is not a normal yard. There's 40 of you. So if we don't break up into cars, we break up into NorCal, SoCal. NorCal white boys are different than SoCal white boys. I've met a fucking shitload that are down as fuck. Love them motherfuckers. A lot of my Coco County white boys are dope. My BCG white boys, Butte County gangsters, all the white boys from up north, they're down as fuck. Sacramaniacs, Fresnets, all of them. These are motherfuckers that have been putting in work and been in the system for fucking ever. You show them their respect. But the, but the main thing is, SoCal runs it all. SoCal runs most of the fucking yards, especially these SoCal yards. Bakersfield and below is the cutoff line. Anywhere above Bakersfield is NorCal. Bakersfield and below is SoCal. This is where the cutoff is. This is how it deviates. Now any yard you're on is being controlled by a motherfucker who's branded. A motherfucker above you, the tightest motherfuckers own every fucking yard. When I just left the yard up in fucking Bakersfield, I knew the big homie. Everybody knew him. They let him out the back. He went back to county. He was sending word. You gotta pay him. If you're on that yard and you got the building and you're, you're fucking hitting, you're bringing in heat, you're making money, you're supporting your people, you're paying the big homies because you're on that yard. You're paying a third. I don't care how much you got, a third of it is getting paid to the fucking big homies and that's it. And they run every fucking yard. There's someone above you. You're the shot caller there's always someone higher up even if you got that yard you're listening to someone else this is a dictatorship not a democracy do not go to fucking prison if you have problems listening wow impressive very impressive um i read who there was some uh congressman or senator or something who 
I, I forget what he did. He did like, uh, I want to say it was like fraud on the campaign trail. Like he did some sort of like, I don't know if it was like voter fraud or like whatever. He did some like, committed some like federal crime when he, um, when he was like running for Congress or Senate or something like that. Anyway, he was convicted and he got sentenced to like four years in prison and he actually went to prison. And I think he wrote a book afterwards. Uh, let me just look this guy up really quick. Um, congressman who went to prison and wrote a book I think is it this guy no this was recent I think it's this guy no maybe this one Mr. Smith I want to say it's this um, yeah I want to say it's this guy yeah, I think this is it. Yeah, okay, so basically this this guy went to prison. And anyway, the point of this is like he he mentioned, I don't know, I read the article or something. I'm paraphrasing here. But he mentioned how like cuz this this congressman or whatever apparently like has a business degree or something, and he said that when he was in prison, he was so impressed with the level of like um business acumen that these prisoners had who had never studied business, never studied anything regarding business at all. But like they were literally doing everything perfectly to create like a super efficient economy um, in prison. And I don't know, it just kind of made me think of that where he was talking about where you kick up to the big homie and there's someone bigger than you and you give a third and blah, blah, blah. Um, he was saying how like white boys break it up in prison. I thought he meant break up fights, but I guess what he means is that like, he breaks up they they break up like the white prison population into like smaller crews or something which which may, doesn't make so much sense to me because i would think that like you know there's 300 south siders in there south side i think is like a mexican gang um those ones you would break up right wouldn't you want to break that up like or, or maybe not i don't know but but i guess i guess you would break up the white population because like NorCal SoCal I, I don't really know and when he says like SoCal runs it I think he means like SoCal runs like the white part I think I don't think like the black people like answer to like the white head prisoner guy or something I don't really know um, but interesting is this not interesting it's very fascinating these motherfuckers will humble you real quick they don't fucking care your little time on lockdown ain't shit the fact that you didn't get to see anybody because you got in trouble ain't shit you're gonna put in fucking time for your race you're gonna be on the yard and get your ass fucking sprayed they're gonna lock you in them cages hot as fuck eight hours after you get sprayed. Then you make it to medical. Then you're fucked. Then you sit in the hole to shoot for 90 fucking days. These are simple ass things that every single person who goes to prison is gonna have to deal with. People ask how a motherfucker gets hard, man. You get hard by living a hard life. Hard times build character. Do you wanna always be hard? No. Am I always hard? No. I got a big ass fucking heart. That's why I push a hard line on people, because I see where they're slipping. I know how they can tighten it up and change their life, and I'm willing to pass that on. When we perpetual pleasure chase, when we exceed the bounds of moderation in our lives, the greatest pleasure cease to please, and that's the only problem I see out here. Everyone's failing to fucking walk into adversity. They're seeking pleasure too much, but it's okay. The smartest people who, who fucking have a large amount of prosperity, they make themselves work still. They still inflict adversity in their life on their own through fitness, through waking up early, through going through it. They fucking do it on purpose because they know that other shit is bullshit and it never ends. Don't land yourself in a motherfucking box. You may never come out that motherfucker. And don't make it on a yard and pee your fucking pants when you see a bunch of blasted ass motherfuckers coming up talking about, where are you from, homeboy? What the fuck they call you? Uh, I don't know. Interesting. You know, it, it, this reminds me. So I did a video on uh, Dr. Amon Ra, right? If you guys want to. Where is that? Um, and it's kind of a long video, but it's this one. If you guys want to check it out, right? Um, oh wait, no, that's not my channel. Hold on. Uh, uh, let's take a look. Anyway, I did a video on Amon Ra, and like the most important thing that I remember him saying, because they asked him at the end of the interview, they were like, "What do you think is the most?" important like what's what's the parting message that you want to give to people and he said self-imposed discipline is the key to living a happy life or something like that right and, and you see this a lot right you hear this with david goggins like the super marathon runner or whatever you know you hear this with like whatever fucking penitentiary steve or like whatever this guy's name is wes watson um you hear it with dr amin ra right you hear, you hear this with a lot of people where essentially like you need to impose discipline on yourself in order to lead a happy life, which is again, why I always say like the only way 
or the only chance that you have at making it is believing that you can make it because if you believe that you can make it you will impose discipline on yourself to do the things that you think that you believe will lead you to get whatever result it is that you want to get okay so who told me to do this prashant thank you prashant you guys got any other suggestions for videos let me know peace